हीट ट्रांसफर कंडक्शन कन्वेक्शन एंड रेडिएशन वट इज हीट ट्रांसफर एंड टेम्परेचर लेट कंसिडर टू ऑब्जेक्ट लेट दिस ऑब्जेक्ट इज हॉट एंड दिस ऑब्जेक्ट इज कोल्ड द टेम्परेचर ऑफ दिस हॉट ऑब्जेक्ट इज हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड एंड द टेम्परेचर ऑफ दिस कोल्ड ऑब्जेक्ट इज फाइव डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड दिस हॉट ऑब्जेक्ट पोजेस इज मोर हीट इनर्जी देन दिस कोल्ड ऑब्जेक्ट That is why the temperature of the hot object is high than the cold object. Now, a natural process of transferring of heat energy or thermal energy occurs between these two objects. Heat or thermal energy from this hot object transfer to this cold object until both the bodies get equal temperature. For example, when heat energy transferred from hot object to cold object let the temperature of hot object drops to 40 degree centigrade and the temperature of cold object rises to 40 degree centigrade this state is known as a thermal equilibrium remember this important point which a lot of teachers skip and do not teach you if two objects are in thermal equilibrium it doesn't mean that heat energy doesn't transfer between them Rather than this, if two objects are in thermal equilibrium, still heat or thermal energy transfers between them, but the net flow of heat energy is zero. For instance, a five joule of heat energy or thermal energy flows from this object to this object, then five joule of heat energy flows from this object to this object. thus the net flow of heat or thermal energy is zero and these both objects are in thermal equilibrium therefore remember that heat transfer is the flow of thermal or heat energy between two objects while temperature only measures the amount of heat energy possessed by an object now let me teach you the concept of conduction a uh, what is conduction of heat let consider a very hot object and you suddenly touch it your hand feel the hotness or uh, your hand may be burn why your hand feel hotness the answer is that some of the thermal or uh, heat energy of this object transfer to your hand as a result your hand get hotness Now let consider another case. If you keep away your hand from this hot object, does you feel the hotness of this hot object? The answer is no, because in this case your hand touched this hot object. Ah, uh, there is contact between your hand and this object. While in this case your hand is away from this hot object. a uh, there is no contact between your hand and this hot object so from these two cases we learn that heat only transfer from hot object to cold object if there is contact between them or in physics we say that flow of heat or transfer of heat requires medium here your hand is cold and when you touch this hot object your hand provides medium to heat energy present in this hot object and it travels towards your hand as a result you feel the hotness let me give you another example for instance you are cooking some sort of food you always place the frying pan or pot exactly above the fire or flames Why you do not hang or place the pan or pot away from the fire? So you aren't doing so. You always place the object straight above the fire. It is because there will be contact between your cooking object and flames. Thus, this contact will provide medium to heat energy, due to which heat energy or thermal energy of the flames would transfer to your cooking object. and food will be cooked by this way now let me give you a deep dive so that you could learn the scientific explanation behind this phenomena of heat 
transfer. We know that cooking objects are made up of metals. The atoms of metals are closely packed together in a uniform three-dimensional pattern. When you place this cooking object or pot made up of atoms on fire, the atoms of this object get heat energy and start vibrating vigorously. Now this atom will transfer heat energy to this atom, while this atom will transfer heat energy to this atom. Hence by this process, energy will start flowing among the atoms and your food will be cooked. Thus this flow of heat energy from fire towards the cooking pot without transferring atoms or matter is known as a conduction or conduction of heat. Remember that different objects conduct different amount of heat energy. Due to their nature of material, they are made up. Let's consider these objects. This object is made up of iron, so its thermal conductivity would be large. While the handle of this object is made up of plastic or wood, while plastic and wood are insulators. Hence thermal conductivity or current conduction would be minimum and them. Now let me clear your concept about what is convection of heat. Let's consider if you place your hand slightly above the fire, you feel the hotness of fire. In the previous slides, we learned that heat energy was only flowing when there was contact between hot object and cold object. But here in this example, your hand doesn't touch the fire, means there is no contact or no medium. Well. The scientific answer is very simple. Do you know the word fluids? The word fluids means gases and liquids. We also know that gases and liquids are in random motion. Are the molecules of gases and liquids possesses kinetic energy? Now here is the important point. The kinetic energy of gas and liquid molecules depend upon heat energy or temperature. Keep this point in your memory. And let me now explain this case. We know that there is air above the fire or flames. Hence the gas molecule absorb heat energy from the fire. As a result, the kinetic energy of gas molecules increase. Hence they rise up and hits your hand. Thus your hand being cold absorb the heat energy from these gas molecules and you feel hotness. Therefore remember that in this case gas molecules or fluids are transferring heat energy from the fire to your hand. The another example of convection is boiling of water. Let's consider that we place an object filled with water on fire. Now there is contact between fire and this conical flask. So by the process of conduction, heat energy from the fire would transfer to the water. Now water being fluids, its molecule will absorb heat energy from the flask and will rise up. Here let me ask you a question. Why these molecules of water rise up after getting heat energy? The answer is that they become less denser. And let me repeat this important point. The water molecule rise up because they become less denser. While the same surrounding molecules of the water are more denser. Thus due to this they rise up. Now the more denser molecules at the top falls down to the bottom. After absorbing heat energy, these molecules will also rise up. Thus the less denser molecules of water rise up and the more denser molecules fall down. This process would be continued until all the molecules of water get heat energy. A time will reach that the kinetic energy of these molecules will be maximum 
and the change of state will start. Water will start boiling. Here, heat energy transfer in water by the motion of molecules from the bottom to the top. This motion is called bulk motion of fluids. Hence, the transfer of heat energy due to bulk motion of fluids from one place to another place is called convection of heat. At last, let me teach you that what is radiation of heat. Let's consider that during winter days, you sit in an open area for the sunlight. Do you feel the hotness of the sunlight? The answer is absolute yes. We absorb the heat energy of the sunlight. Now here comes the interesting question. Does this heat energy of the sun reaches you by the process of conduction of heat? The answer is absolute no. Because there is large distance between you and the sun. Secondly, does the heat energy of the sun reaches you by the process of convection of heat? The answer is again absolute no. Because when the air absorbs heat energy, the molecules of air rise up. Secondly, there is vacuum or space between the sun and the earth. Hence, the heat energy of the sun doesn't reach you by the process of convection. Then how this heat energy of the sun reaches you? Well, it reaches you by the process of radiation. So the heat energy of the sun is transferred by the process of radiation. Remember that radiation of heat doesn't require medium like that of conduction or convection. Thus we can say that the transfer of heat energy without any material medium in the form of radiations or electromagnetic waves is known as a radiation of heat. Also remember that every object radiates some sort of heat energy until its temperature is absolute zero. And there is a difference between absolute zero and zero degree centigrade. For example, you and I and everything around us radiates some sort of heat energy. Secondly, the higher the temperature of an object, the higher would be the rate of radiation of heat energy. So hot object radiates more energy than cold objects. At last, let me give you one bonus point. Remember that black objects are good absorber of radiation like this t-shirt while white objects are bad absorber or good reflector of radiations like this t-shirt in winter people wear black color dress while in summer they wear light color or white color dress i hope that you have learned the concept of heat transfer conduction convection and radiation Thank you very much for watching this lecture.